So I am Cara Di Stefano. I am a iron worker, predominantly working with cast iron. I was trained as a silversmith. I do not do a lot of digital work, so this was a really cool experience to get to learn this very different art form and kind of translate the sculptures that I make from mm, physical world into this, this digital space. I focus a lot on my own memories or mm, some semantics and some biotics and kind of getting into what things mean to people. Not necessarily mean that, you know, red symbolizes anger, but more into imagery and objects, what objects mean, what objects can mean to different people, and kind of exploring that with my work. And this this residency was really really good for my art practice. I think it pushed me in a different direction than I was comfortable with. And I've made some really interesting stuff that I'm excited to translate once again from this now digital space into a physical space, hopefully, and try and cast some of these these files that I've made. So huh. yeah, it's been it's been great. <laughs> I never thought about that, that you're gonna cast the files. Um yeah, hopefully. That sounds cool. Yeah, so this, your work is over here, right? Mm hmm Yeah, so we can go over my kind of mausoleum. That It was not the intention, but this was from one of the AI image, I'm not even sure what to call it, that they made the images 3D from a 2D image into a 3D file. And this bottom one was just a little casting, a little cast iron mm, gothic window that I have. Um, and maybe I can, I can get some pictures of those for you to put into this. And so I took that file and I was very determined to learn Blender during this residency, which was a much bigger task, I guess, than I had realized, having never worked in any kind of digital, digital program. So I did do some stuff in Blender. I didn't do as much as maybe I had thought that I would. Uh, I got quite frustrated a few times and then, you know, kind of took a step back and realized that I needed to be a bit easier on myself, that I was not going to learn this program, you know, in six weeks that some people take their lives to learn uh, to really get good at. Um, yeah. It did really help uh, with a lot of things. But uh, so this this image of this casting that I have, I actually put it into paint and kind of glitched it. I couldn't find anything online that would glitch these images the way I wanted. And so I did it in paint, just kind of cutting sections and moving it over and cutting another section and moving it. And that's actually what I ended up doing with the also the one right on top. Um, and then taking that image and putting it into a, I was calling them a poofer, that it made it poofy. It 3D poofed all of my pictures. And it turned into these mausoleum kind of shapes, these like almost cemetery kind of things that give a lot more emotion than I had expected. And these castings are somewhat symbolic of my grandparents who passed away during COVID and kind of dealing with that from being on the other side of the world. Uh, I'm originally from Columbus, Ohio, and now I live in Wrocław, Poland. And I rode out COVID over here, which was really difficult. And I'm finally starting to work through that and those losses and, I don't know, homesickness maybe. And yeah, I was really kind of amazed at the, the way that this AI was able to pull those feelings out of just these pictures. Um, I, I think it, it worked really well for what I didn't even know I was kind of looking for. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, so there's the three kind of big mausoleums that I believe in each one of them, there's actually the image of the original artwork. And inside this bottom one, there's the picture of the original casting and then the picture of the glitched casting that I had made in paint. And then everything else was kind of created when I put it in this 3D fire, as I was also calling it. This is also, I use kind of as my, you know, what I call it, my, to say something to go underground, my sign. Uh, and then uh, I did notify, <laughs> to go underground? Yeah, that this that I do have stuff underground, and I wanted people to kind of see this as like a, I don't know, portal anywhere. Yeah, kind of. So that I have these pictures that it says "go above, go below." It's quite yeah subtle. It's not really. I didn't want it to be direct, but also in the little description outside of this mausoleum, I did have the that if you use press F to fly. I know is it G to fly yeah. for fly mode and you can go up and you can go down. So there are some things that I put underground from the studio, uh, but maybe we can go up into the other two Yeah, before we go down. You know, they look very nice with the, the dome. It comes from a picture I found online. It's kind of the only photo you find if you look for the salon, the academic French Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember you mentioning that. Yeah, it, and they, it, they, they look, look amazing together. They look really, they look like they're, you know, very intentionally put together. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, I was, I was really happy when we started putting stuff in here to kind of create the gallery that they, they fit really nicely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so if we go inside of this one that's right here, this second one kind of the middle one uh this is that dream gaussian that joey zaza also was using that i think is just such an incredible technique or i mean not technique incredible thing that we can do it has this imagined space uh it pulls the texture and the colors from you can see this is the image of the original casting uh kind of nestled inside of it mm, and it pulls this texture and these colors into this weird cave-like structure. Um, and I don't know, it's, you know, this is something I, I don't know how I would sculpt. Yeah. I am not even sure how to begin making a casting like with, with this kind of shape inside of it. Uh, so <laughs> to say to explore this, different side of my sculptures was really fascinating. Uh, I think it is definitely something I want to continue and I think possibly to 3D print them or something like that. And um, yeah, to use this somehow, uh, I think could be quite interesting. Wow, it's almost like a textile in some places. Yeah, the original casting was lace. It's called firanki, which is Polish for curtains. Oh. So it's the kind of nice <laughs> lacy curtains that people refer to them as grandma's curtains with lace flowers and all that. And I think they're just so beautiful. And so I put that on the original casting with this kind of flower motif. Um, and yeah, the, the textile texture really, I think, translated quite well into this, um, GLB. So, yeah. And I love the little, still, you can see the little flower. Right uh, now that I know that it's lace, I mean, it looks like, yeah, it, it looks very like metal, like it's some sort of metal. I, I don't know. You're the you're the you're the uh, <laughs> person that works with that. But um, mm -hmm. tell me about like the metal flower pink kind of mm -hmm. element there. Yeah. So this it is a cast iron piece, oh. and so it's from the original was a piece of lace, kind of on a piece of foam. So there was lace, and then this dried flower that I sat on top. 
And then from there, I made a mold of it and then turned it into the the cast iron sculpture. Uh, And it is two-sided, which is kind of on the outside of this big cave thing we're in is the picture of the window that's on the other side of this. Um, But yeah, so these flowers, it's really delicate details, which is something I really like to push with cast iron. I think it's viewed as such a heavy material, quite industrial or (laughs) even viewed as a very masculine kind of material. And um, a few years ago, I was, you know, just kind of playing around and I tried to cast some pine needles in a pile and it ended up casting these like individual pine needles, which, you know, like needle thin cast iron and cast iron can be quite brittle. So a lot of them did break. But realizing that I was able to cast such fine details, I've really kind of held on to that and I'm really pushing that now um, so that it can relay these textures, these delicate, feminine, soft textures in such an industrial, you know, cold, hard material. Um, I really like kind of juxtaposing that. Uh, Cool. And I think it, it, yeah, I think it worked really well to also then make the, this 3D object in a digital space, which kind of adds this extra, extra layer to it. Um, yeah, I absolutely love these little GLB caves. They are so right. Neat. It's there's so much to do and explore in them. <laughs> yeah. And then you get these little windows that you can kind of look through and look out and it just feels, I don't know, feels like you're a little kid again. Yeah, you can just kind of explore and, and yeah, use your imagination. (laughs) And also, I don't know, the idea of like, I'm, you know, quote unquote, standing inside one of my sculptures is such a cool thing. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, it's it's very neat, and I I really I really love I really do love what I what I made through this residency. I think it's really been um, and what's the word I'm thinking of? Mm-hmm. I was gonna say fruitful. I don't think that's what I'm going for. Never mind. <laughs> fruitful sounds good. Fruitful, well, maybe. Yeah. Full. Yeah, it was it was fruitful what I came up with, what I learned and discovered. And uh, yeah, it's stuff I definitely still want to keep exploring, which is cool. I never expected to be, you know, really into digital work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we can go up into the next one. I think the next one, where is it? Over here. It's similar. It's the same sculpture. It's just the picture inside is from the other side of this one. So it has the window inside of it. And this green, I'm not sure where where the, the program pulled this green, but I just love it. It's like mossy and decayed and kind of what I do in a lot of my other works. The, this This casting was not too aged or rusted or anything but then this this shape that came out of it has this like left in the forest kind of color to it which I think is so neat (laughs) yeah definitely I used to be a painter so I often think in painters terms and um, Mm -hmm. it looks sickly like uh, yeah yeah and it also I always think about this green in term of Caravaggio's sick Bacchus have you oh uh, yeah yeah that's what it reminds Definitely. me of. there's this the sheen that just is kind of sick and I think also because there's little mm-hmm. bits of pinks in it in points mm-hmm. so then you're thinking it's yeah. like skin or something yeah or like it looks like a bruise like a really mm-hmm. bad yeah bruise. very old bruise yeah yeah I love these colors I think there's and that you know it's not in this sculpture i mean there is blue and there is yellow so maybe that's what it pulled from but i don't know (laughs) yeah yeah it's definitely like i mean i think with with if you think of digital stuff as material i think Mm -hmm. it's really helpful you know i mean i think Mm -hmm. that's, that's sometimes people just don't 
Like it's going to do things because it's Mm -hmm. uh, that you can't expect just like, you know, any other material like clay or paint, iron, you know, the things are, and, and you're not going to be able to explain them and that's okay. You know, and just go with it. (laughs) I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. This, this weird green. Mm Mm-hmm. I think this was one of the first, let me come out of it and look at it again. This is one of the first GLBs that I made uh, that really, you know, and at first it was like the the detail from my work's kind of lost, you know, it's this green, where did it come from? But the more that I looked at it, the more that it really resonated with me, that the, the feelings are still here, the ideas here, it's even, I don't know, expanded upon coming into this kind of mausoleum shape you know originally coming from this gothic window um still kind of religious themed softly uh which is something i i am kind of playing with as i i want maybe the sense of maybe not necessarily religion but a sacredness a something that's important this idea of importance in an object um that can be so different for everyone. Uh, everyone has some kind of different feeling to some symbol, some shape, these windows or, you know, a, a cemetery, a mausoleum of sorts that it can kind of go in many directions, not just necessarily religion, which can be kind of polarizing. And I don't really want to go that direction with it. I want it to be more about kind of the emotion of... I don't know, these kinds of shapes, if that makes sense. (laughs) Yeah. The name is Elegies 2. Where did that name come from? Um, So when I started putting this stuff in, I realized how much it really does look like a cemetery or some kind of monument to something that it it does give off this kind of visual of maybe not in death but of like a remembrance and I was skimming through words and trying to you know word map different ideas for what I wanted this to be and I found the word elegies which I think is a very underused word I think it's a beautiful word that is when you um Usually there's like the eulogy when someone dies, you say nice things and the elegy, typical lamentation for the dead of, of something that's lost and you want to say serious, beautiful things about it. And with these castings originally kind of being from my grandparents passing or also really connected with memory and, and how time you know we cannot can't stop time time's always going our memories and and all of this kind of feeling of losing things of this loss that you know it's not always bad that we can kind of pull the beauty out of it that yeah that there's always still beauty in it there's still art kind of in this kind of times we're yeah <laughs> yeah the experience you know mm-hmm. that that happened and then was lost that recognizing yeah. that there's a beauty in that process yeah yeah so that's really i guess it was kind of the unintended originally unintended mm. motif or feeling that i was quite happy with when I kind of realized that it was here this the yeah exactly the loss and and what we learn from it or what we how we go on after yeah. mm-hmm. do you want to go let's underground think, yeah let's go under <laughs> we'll follow okay the sign. so this mm-hmm. we'll follow the sign Pick out. Yeah, this is one of, I think one of the first things 
that I learned from you guys when we had our original like first meeting to kind of get associated with this space was that if you press G, you can fly, you can go up and you can also go down. I don't know. I think a bit of it was maybe at the beginning being overwhelmed with digital work or kind of not having any idea really what I was going to do. Uh, and then it was also kind of fun. I think we, we talked a few times. That it's like having this, uh, like having a fort when you're a little kid, having this, this secret space that's all yours. And so I continued working down here and it felt nice. Like I titled this one tucked away because mm-hmm. it, it is, it's this, this almost secret space that I would use to experiment and, and put up my, my weird little files that I didn't know what I was doing. Um, yeah, it was, I liked being down here. It was nice cozy yeah it is it's a weird feeling you get sort of used to being inside of here you know Uh and to the point where it doesn't make sense but it doesn't necessarily feel like you're in a flat screen you know yeah yeah exactly (laughs) so the feeling of being under something and tucked away you know it's still there you know even Uh if it's we're in this sort of weird world that yeah. is very different from our normal world. So mm-hmm. We're in both worlds because yeah. we're sitting in front of the computer and then we're also inside of here and we're feeling, mm-hmm. we're feeling both tucked away and then whatever other way the place is feeling around our physical bodies. Was yeah. Super bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so we had we had a few critiques underground, which was cool. It was, I don't know, was, I've always liked looking at the ground. I think in my master's thesis, I wrote a bit about it that, you know, I was a shy kid and I always paid attention to the ground. It was, it was interesting. It was something to look at that, you know, it wasn't other people. And um, during my master's, I got really into the stories that are on the ground and almost investigation kind of like, like maybe not tracking, but that kind of idea of seeing what's on the ground and what it could tell us. So being under the ground here felt like a nice continuation of that. Um, Yeah. And I found, I remember you had suggested the one website that had all of the free files. I can't remember what it was called. I think it was Sketchfab. Yes, Sketchfab. And I found this nest. I was looking for nature stuff. I really like using nature in my work. Again, kind of the juxtaposition of natural material and iron which is man-made, but also natural as, you know, from the ground, also in our blood, a whole bunch of of that, but using kind of the natural materials along with this hard metal. Uh, So I knew I wanted to include some kind of natural objects, and I knew uh, that I was not going to be able to build them in Blender the way that I wanted. Mm -hmm. Um, Not yet, still practicing, but... I found this nest on Sketchfab and it did have a lot more sticks and it was a really huge file with very detailed leaves. And I, I kind of edited that down a bit to be a bit more or, or a bit less detailed, I guess, to kind of have more of this um, holding shape that's um, not necessarily nest not necessarily anything else um, that still gives the idea of, of a little nest. And then in each one, I just took some of the works that I've made recently, uh, some of the sculptures, and I have the original picture off to the left of each nest. And then within them is kind of these, I don't know, like these eggs of my sculptures that I was exploring and at certain points you can see how the file is the original sculpture and then when you go in and you explore and you move around it's you know this totally different thing crazy shapes still the same colors but 
really unique kind of take on each of these sculptures and a different view of them is this really morphed and pushed and pulled uh, again with these these AI poofifiers or <laughs> yeah. uh, these 3D things from this 2D image of a 3D thing. And yeah, how these mm, metamorphosized perhaps and kind of really, I felt like these are my favorite ones. These are the, the best ones that I made as I was exploring this kind of new technology. Um, yeah. So these are, these are like my little experiments down here. Um, kind of put together nicely. (laughs) Yeah. What, what is the green like surface thing? Above us? Because when you first come down, it's like, Mm. it's so, it's, it's really amazing. It's like all these little shards. Yeah, and you can be inside of it and and not see it. Um, this was actually because I wanted above, I wanted some kind of ground underneath that first kind of mausoleum space. Yeah. And all of the files that I was finding that were on Sketchfab or on any of the other pages with, with these these GLBs, it wasn't quite right. They didn't feel right. And so I decided that I would attempt to make one myself. <laughs> And I found a picture, just a picture of, I think it was just, I typed ground into Google images and I took it and I threw it in paint and I changed the colors up and edited it into, I think an oval. And then I threw it into one of these AI 2D to 3D models. And this is what it came up with. And I did change, I don't know if it was the amount of detail or what I can't remember what it was called but I was kind of playing with the scale that was the option mm-hmm. um and yeah it came up with these this texture this this weird bubbly transparent inside but yes yeah, so it's the idea of ground kind of oh, I um that. yeah I really like this thing it 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 was quite cool just from a picture of the ground yeah no very unique like and also the colors just so interesting (laughs) yeah and I am a sucker for a natural color I do I really do Mm -hmm. natural colors um I see you do too like you're not a (laughs) not a neon person not Um, quite I've actually started a bit with a new sculpture I'm working on has a bit of, it's not even neon, but it is a warm pink and it's very different. Not sure how I feel about it yet. (laughs) (laughs) Makes you uncomfortable. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's just too bright. (laughs) Yeah. No, I I like my earth tones. It's true. I, I, I don't sure what that is. I mean, I don't, you said you're from Ohio. Mm-hmm, yeah. Are you from a small town with lots of nature? Uh, I'm from just outside of Columbus, mm-hmm. and we did have a little patch of, there was a small forest in our neighborhood, and we're on the Scioto River, so I was really in nature a lot as a kid, and also my grandpa has a cabin in Hocking Hills, so we were there a lot, and I, like I had mentioned, I, I like working with memory, and I think... Most of my favorite memories from childhood were somewhere in a forest. So I know I definitely pull from that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some of these yeah. are really interesting. Like I like this this one with this sort of blue. Because when you look mm. at it without the reference, it just kind of looks like blue goo coming out. Mm-hmm. Of the yeah. Bottom. And it's, <laughs> it's, you're sort of like, you know, what is this? And is this... Ah, like an infection or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This growth kind of like leaking out. And from a few angles, it's not, you know, you can't quite see this window. It almost looks like bone or wood or something in this, this file. But from, I think there's one, one point where you can see, I think somewhere over here, 
it's almost the full window. But yeah, it really warped it. It's, it's super interesting. Hmm. So tell us about how you're going to carry on this work or what you're doing. So mm -hmm. yeah, what you're you know, what are you gonna do with I mean you mentioned that you might be casting these things, which is yeah kind of nuts to me, but uh <laughs> have you started experimenting? Me also. Yeah. I have not yet. I'm waiting for some access to some 3D printers and I want to attempt to either 3D print like the images from upstairs, we can say, of the windows and try to have that 3D object that I can then cast into, I don't know, aluminum or, or bronze or something. Um, I am partial to iron because I, I really like it, but you know, it could be cast into any other, other metal, but to try and have this physically glitched window, I think mm -hmm. would be really fascinating. Um, and to come from this 3d file, which of course is how a lot of people work with 3d printing and all of that, but I've never done it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think this is a really good starting point that I already have these files that I kind of never expected to have of of works that I can kind of manipulate and play with now. I had been thinking about trying to make a physically glitched um, casting of a window and the the idea I had was to have this window and slice it up into a bunch of little slices and you know pull some to the left and pull some to the right and and kind of do it myself and then I learned here I can do that online and I think it will be more close to what I envision I'm sure I could do it physically but I think it would take me a very long time yeah yeah so I I'm excited to explore that and and see where where I can go I've kind of with these windows, I'm now working with some doors, kind of going into this architecture style sculptures and still working with natural motifs, leaves or, or something from nature. And I don't know, I think the glitches with them could really add something, uh, but we will see. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Very ambitious. Very ambitious. <laughs> this sounds awesome. It sounds awesome. Yeah, I think it could be super cool, but we will see. Oh, <laughs> uh, one day. I, okay, so thank you okay. very much. I will actually, actually, I'm going to give yeah. you a, a little hand clap. On oh, yay. 